Welcome back to the March 12th episode of QUTV. I'm Melissa Weed. Last week, a group of Quincy University students traveled to Springfield to take part in a rally to help college students. QTV's Pete Leja joined the students and has more on the story. Uh, for the very important funding that flows through a variety of um, sources. Last Thursday, the Federation of Independent Illinois Colleges and Universities held a lobby day in Springfield in order to keep the Monetary Award Program, or MAP, grants alive. MAP provides grants to Illinois residents who attend approved Illinois colleges and demonstrate financial need. Around 500 students at Quincy University receive some sort of financial aid from the MAP grants each year. Several QU students were on hand at the rally to the lobby to their state senators and show their support for the event. Not many people get to meet their senator, and we got to like talk on a one-on-one -on -one basis. It was cool to see like interactions with students and their senators. But just looking at his different point of view and him, his point of view and how he really wants to like help with the MAP grants is very, very pleasing. MAP grants were cut by five percent this last semester because more students received awards than the Illinois Student Assistance Commission predicted. The rally was held in support of the $10 million in supplemental funds to restore the full funding for this semester's MAP grants are funded by the state of Illinois each fiscal year. But because MAP funding has remained level since 2002, while college tuition and fees continually increase, universities tend to make up the difference for students. But more cuts could put many students and universities into a financial bind. For QTV News, I'm Pete Legia. Q hosted its first ever speed networking event this past Tuesday in the Health and Fitness Center's Hall of Fame room. The evening began with a short mixer, followed by the networking event. Students and employers met one-on-one -on -one for a few minutes to talk and exchange business cards, giving students much-needed networking experience, which is critical to any job search. The goal for the students was to leave the event feeling confident to start their job search. So basically we decided to do a speed networking event to kind of get students prepared to, for a work environment where they're going to have to um, network with professionals. So tonight we invited about 27 professionals and 27 students who are going to intermingle tonight. Each one's going to have 45 seconds to give a little spiel and then close up and wrap up. So. The event was hosted by the Q's Office of Career Services and the Institute for Management Accountants Student Organization. Wednesday marked the start of the season of Lent. In the traditional sense of the season, people are asked to give something up for 40 days. We asked students what they decided to give up for Lent. I haven't thought about it too hard. I was going to try to give up sweets, but we'll see how that goes. So. I plan on trying to give up. Um, I love Mountain Dew, so I'm going to try to stay away from it. It's not that good for me. It's too much sugar, and I'm an athlete, so I need to get back to the basic water and power eat. So I'm going to try to do that for a while. I plan on giving up chocolate because I eat too much of it and I don't know I use it as much as I use Facebook so that's what I'm giving up. <coughs> Q's Brenner Library has a new exhibit dedicated to a world famous local author. 2010 marked 100 years since Mark Twain's death and the 125th anniversary of Huckleberry Finn. This semester the library is showcasing many Mark Twain related items. The exhibit includes some of his work some of his famous works, critical essays, newspaper clippings, and even a chamber pot he threw out a hotel window at reporters. The display also ties in with Mark Twain Town and Gown presentation on Thursday, March 24th at McHugh Theater. The Twain exhibit will remain in Brenner Library throughout most of the semester. Mark Twain's famous book, Huckleberry Finn, has sold more than 20 million copies worldwide. While most students will, be either, will either be vacationing or catching up on sleep at home, this spring break, some QU students will be traveling all over the country as volunteers on service trips. These students will perform tasks ranging from cleaning up a bench, I'm sorry, a beach, to promoting sanitation. I'm going to be going to Biloxi, Mississippi, and we will be repairing some of the houses that were destroyed by Hurricane Katrina. I will be going on the uh, Mobile, Alabama service trip. I'm the uh, team leader for it. And we'll be doing a variety of things. We'll be working with the Bay Area Food Bank. Um, we will be doing some beach cleanup at um, incurring Hurricane Katrina uh, post-disaster and um, some of the oil spill. So we'll be, we'll be working on the beaches for that. Um, we'll be going to the habitat, local habitat community down in Mobile. And we'll also be posting signs up uh, for so people don't um, dispose of waste in, um, 
and drain sewers, basically. I'm just excited to see the physical effects of my work. Um, since we will be doing a lot of like manual labor and rebuilding stuff, it's going to be um, very rewarding to see like the physical things that come out of our work. Service trips are a great way to lend a hand to others in need. Traveling and earning service hours are minor benefits compared to the reward of helping others. If you would like to join these students and volunteer your time, you can talk, contact Brian Silverstein in the Campus Ministry Office. On March 26, Quincy University will welcome some furry friends to campus for the third annual Pet Parade. Earlier this week, I spoke with the events coordinator, Mike Ferroni, to discuss the parade. I am here today with former QUTV floor director and current coordinator of the third annual Pet Parade, Mike Ferroni. Mike, can you tell us a little bit about the Pet Parade? Yes, the Pet Parade is going to be um, Saturday, March 26th from 1 to 3 p.m. and it's going to be held at the Friary actually on campus. Um, and it's going to be basically an opportunity to spread um, awareness about the cause of the Humane Society as well as uh, an opportunity for them to take in donations from the community as well. What changes are being made to the Pet Parade from last year? Uh, we're still going to have the pets um, from the Humane Society be brought out and everything like that and campus, uh, the whole campus is, in, uh, is asked to participate um, as well as the community as well. But what we actually are going to be doing a little bit differently is going to be the uh, canine unit at 2.30 is going to be stopping by from the Quincy Police Department and they're going to do a demonstration for us. So we're really excited about that. If our listeners would like to get involved, how th can they go about doing so? Anyone who wants to get involved um, can definitely stop by that day. Um, like I said, there's donations. There, they can be uh, given donations or any monetary donations as well. Um, tangible items such as food or uh, toys or collars, leashes, anything like that is a great way to help out. If any listeners cannot attend the parade but would like to contribute, what should they do? Uh, the best way would just be to stop by. Um, it's on North 36th Street, the Humane Society, and really what they do is they take anyone in that's willing to uh, help out in any way, shape, or form, such as doing laundry, walking the dogs, uh, taking the dogs into a room and just playing with them and keeping them social, keeping them um, more appealing for people to want to stop by and adopt, really. The Pet Parade will be held on March 26th at 1 p.m. Thank you, Mike, and we look forward to the Pet Parade. Thank you. Despite being eliminated from the GLVC Conference Tournament, the Lady Hawks are headed to the 2011 NCAA Division II National Tournament. This is a Lady Hawk 7th National Tournament appearance. They are number two seed in the Midwest region bracket and will face number seven seed Kentucky Wesleyan Lady Panthers. The winner of the Quincy and Kentucky Wesleyan game will face the winner of the Wisconsin Parkside and Missouri s &T game March 12th. The Midwest region is hosted by number one seed Michigan Tech. The NCAA selects a total of 64 teams to participate in the tournament. The bracket is broken up into eight different regional brackets with the championship being played in St. Joseph, Missouri on March 25th. If you're looking for a way to try out a new video game over break, QUTV's Keenan O'Connor has a suggestion for you in this week's edition of Gamers Insight. Hello everyone, I'm Keenan O'Connor reporting for this week's segment of Gamers Insight, QU's source for video game reviews. On this week's show, we're here to give a quick review of Bethesda Softworks and Obsidian Entertainment's Fallout release, Fallout New Vegas. For anyone who has never played Fallout, the entire Fallout series is a post-nuclear war, war role-playing game. Each game has its own unique story. However, all of the games take place in the future after a nuclear war breaks out upon the world. In Fallout New Vegas, you play as a courier in the year 2281 nearly 204 years after the Great Nuclear War of 2077. You are delivering a platinum chip to the post-war Las Vegas, now called New Vegas. As you make your way through the Mojave Wasteland to New Vegas, you are ambushed by a man in a checkered, sh checkered suit and shot in the head and left for dead. A few days later, you wake up in a house in the town of Good Springs. From there, you begin your journey to find the man who tried to kill you and even make some friends along the way. As with most RPG games, there are many side missions and miniature games in the game. As well, you can even play in the casinos of New Vegas and they also have expanded a lot of the options that you can take with interactions with other characters. 
In comparison with the other Fallout games in previous years, I believe that Fallout New Vegas is an amazing addition to the series and is probably the best Fallout made. Reason being is that the features, it, the features its storyline, and many of the new options that allow you to customize your gaming experience to your liking and a lot of different factions in the game, such as the NCR, Mr. House, Kaiser's Legion, and the followers of the Apocalypse, and so on. New Vegas can be found at your local gaming retailer as well as the new downloadable concept map, Dead Money, is available on your console's marketplace. Well, that's all I have for today, but before I go, here's a preview of Epic Games and Microsoft Studios' Gears of War theme. A crashing sky on the screen A city drowning in God's black tears I cannot bear Hope you enjoyed this segment of Gamer's Insight. I'm Keenan O'Connor, reporting for Kiwi TV. Thank you for tuning in to QTV News. We'll be back in two weeks with the latest campus news. Have a wonderful and safe spring break.